So it's the following day after dropping off the Mercedes CLS and picking up the other cars that I had. Uh, what was it? The uh, Nissan Duke, wasn't it? No, not Nissan Qashqai I picked up. And going to Barra Motors and finding my old Alfa Romeo. Well, I'm straight back into it the following morning. I gave my uh, main dealer a message at last night and said, have you got anything in? He said, yeah, I've got a couple of cars. Come by, swing by in the morning. So I'm straight into buying more stock. We've got a 64 plate Fiesta five door here with the one litre, one litre eco boost engine on this one. Not the tidiest of ones. It's got a, a scrape down there, which isn't outrageous, but on here, on this side, we've got a uh, wing that has a dent and a crease in it there. So I think we'll need a new wing there. I've tried to fix wings like that and you just have all kinds of problems. It's all crumpled up here. So we need to put a wing on it and get it to mount, which means we'd have that corner painted with that a bit of paint over in that corner. I guess it's not outrageous. The rest of it's not too bad. The wheels seem to be pretty good. MOT, uh, sorry, service history. Service history only runs up to 2018, so it wouldn't be covered by the Ford protection unless I can find out that the company that's done the MOTs up there, I wish I'll give a ring, they've got a sticker in the window there, see if they've done these services since. I'm leaving it running and I'm going to leave it running for a while to see if we get any oh, starvation lights on it at all. I think the thing to do with this at this price point would be to get it into the Moors boys. I don't know if we can necessarily afford to do a cam belt, but we can certainly drop the sump and check if there's any debris in the sump, because like I say, it's only done 54,000 miles, and the last one we had of this age with 54,000 miles was older than this, two years older. The belts was clean as a whistle, weren't they? So if we drop, drop the sump, check that the strainer is clear, clean it all out, put it back on again, if it's all good to go, then give the customer the option of putting a wet belt on at a big discounted rate like we did with our subscriber, Rennie, and if they decide not to, note it on the sales invoice form. You've got to be so careful with these cars now. If people are part exchanging these cars in, at 10 years old and the belts haven't been done you've got to hammer them as if the car's dented all over because the cost of putting a belt on is very high unless you think you're going to be able to sell them without doing the belts on and get the customers to let me do that as well get the customers to contribute interior seems clean and tidy on it interior seems good wind up rear windows but we have got bluetooth which is probably the most important thing there it seems to be idling nicely enough seems to be happy on that front the oil didn't look particularly clean in the engine bay. It doesn't look like it's had an oil change for a little while. Um, so I guess it's a case of just getting it cheap because it might need quite a lot of prep. Right, we've got a little Toyota, a Toyota Yaris to look at as well. So we'll nip back and uh, maybe leave this running while we test drive that one and uh, just double check there's no lights coming up on the dash. Always a bit nervous. I think a lot of these are going to get parts changed now because the mechanic's going to tell people, oh, wet belt's bad news. You need to get your cam belt done and we're going to charge you 1,200, 1,500 quid for it. So I imagine that's why a lot of these are going to be part exchange, which means there's probably going to be a lot of good low mileage cars like this available. And if you can get belts done for a decent price or like me, get, you know, say to somebody, we'll go give you a huge discount. And they're probably going to be pretty good buys to be fair. So next one up. A slightly tired looking little Yaris on a 2007. It's the 1.3 with the five speed box. All the ones I've had have had six speed boxes. So I think that might be the later Yaris's with the 1.3 in. Nice enough spec with its alloys. All the corners have scuffing on them. There's quite a lot of scratch on my boot there. I mean, I guess it is 2008 after all. Let's get with it. How old is that now? Seriously old, isn't it? Um, but these Yaris's hold their money quite well. Bit of a scuff there. Bonnet seems to be sitting a little high there on that corner, doesn't it? Although, that what I will say is when I pop the bonnet, the hinges are so stiff they <laughs> held the bonnet up on its own. I'll show you, it's classic. You didn't actually need to have a uh, where is it in here? Seats are a bit dirty, they need a blooming good wet clean. Electric mirrors. One thing I noticed as well is the air conditioning has been disconnected, so the cable's not on the air conditioning. That's oh, a cable, the belt's not on the air conditioning. Yeah, look, the bonnet's so stiff, it stays up on its own. So that's probably why it's sitting high though, it needed pushing down a bit. Bit of a pat, 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 bit of an exhaust leak back there, or is that just a rocking of the engine against something? I mean, the actual engine itself seems to be humming along quite nicely. So it might be something that's knocking something somewhere. Possibly. I'm not 
sure what that is. Um, yeah, so the belt's been disconnected for the aircon, so does that mean that the uh, aircon pump sees? No, the aircon pump's moving freely, but it's disconnected, which is um, a strange one. But I don't suppose you sell this car on the basis of own aircon anyway, do you? I think this is a, a clean it up and eBay or Facebook Marketplace it off cheap. Get Just get a fresh ticket on it, give it a wash over and a clean and say, I'm not promising you anything other than it will get you to work and back. Um, mechanically sound on that front not that it's got air con and everything else I think once the seats are cleaned up they'll be all right uh, it's got a load of paperwork I haven't had a chance to look through the history yet it's got a load of paperwork in it so these are the ones where this, this, the seats slide forwards and backwards don't they quite versatile these little Yaris it's got the typical thing on Yaris's as well when they get to this age where the door card fabric starts to come away a little bit but again we've got to be realistic about the age of this car the kind of price point where I mean, they do hold their money quite well. It's probably still with a fresh ticket on it, cleaned up and polished. And how many miles have it got? 78, so the miles isn't bad, 78,000. It's probably still a 3k car, I'd have thought. Depending on how far you take it, really, but I don't think this is one for us to be spending a lot of time, a lot of time on. It drives really nicely, though. I've driven it around a little bit. Clutch is good, gears are good. Pulls nicely. Oh, look how empty it is on fuel. They're delivered with next to no fuel. I better get it back and stop running it. Anyway, we'll go back and see if we can't negotiate a deal on these couple because I like to buy everything just to keep these guys happy and keep them calling me, really. I said to you I'd update you on how this car drives. It, um, it drives absolutely brilliantly. I am seriously impressed. Uh, I haven't had a car that feels this together for a long time. And a lot of the cars I've been doing are really, really good. But this literally nothing on it at all no suspension squeaks no suspension rattles no um issues with the gearbox no issues with the engine it drives so smoothly those dsg gearboxes are incredible whatever you might think about them they are incredible they change so smoothly you never feel you can i can't even tell they're changing i mean i guess bad ones you can but this one absolutely pucker it changes so sweetly i don't know why you'd want to manually change gear because that changes gear far better than any human ever could um the diesel loads of punch loads of low down punch but it isn't as vocal normally the the, the volkswagen diesels can be a little bit vocal i find um but that one smooth quiet like i say the car itself feels really well together there's very little scuttle shake that you get from convertibles I haven't been driving around with the roof down by the way I just put it down as I got back just to double check it did work because I hadn't actually tried it for myself yet um it's just it's just a super lovely car to drive so again massive thanks to the subscriber that sold it to us I can't think there's probably many out there that are better than this one apart from the only thing I've noticed is um a little bit of alloy refurb could be beneficial but other than that the bodywork is absolutely lovely there's a minor, minor mark down there on the corner, the front corner of the bumper. But overall, it's lovely. I, 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 I say it is just a lovely thing to drive. And I think oh, there might be a little ding just there. A little ding just there. But the interior, again, is just absolutely lovely. The condition is fantastic. And it's got all the paperwork, all the handbooks. These, I imagine, are quite hard to get a hold of if they go missing. I imagine they're quite expensive just drives beautifully absolutely beautifully dab radio as well which i was surprised 2000 and was it 2013 yeah dab radio bluetooth parking sensors i didn't realize as well the roof on these um i'll try, try and show you a second i didn't realize you can actually do it as a sunroof as well as have it right the way down over it comes i did have to move away from the wall a little bit there because it saw it as an obstruction i was parked too close to the unit there you go there's the sunroof bit that panel there is glass. I didn't realise that it had that. So you can have it like a sunroof like that. But was up close. You can have it as a sunroof like that, or you can have it. Um, you can actually does do a tilt. It does do a slide on that bit as alone as well. I'm just turning. The, there we go. There we go. So you got tilt, and then you got full slide. I don't know if this was an option on these. Whether they all came with it or not. Someone who knows their Volks, uh, Volkswagens, perhaps they can tell me. But yeah. It's a nice feature to have. You don't want the roof all the way down, but you still want to get a bit of sun in. Is that manual, that one? I think it's manual, yeah. So, yeah, 
so I've been driving it around. The only problem we've had is I've taken it over 34,000 miles. <laughs> so yeah, it's over 30, it's, it's now got 35 on the uh, on the dash, not 34, which uh, I don't think it can make a big difference in the grand scheme of things. So yeah, nice little car, couple of days of nice buying some nice stock, but we've got some retail stuff going on today, so I better get in and get my act together, ready for some people that are arriving. So what we've got on sales wise, things are starting to move around a little bit. We've got an inquiry on the Ford Black Ford Focus. We've got someone coming in on the Ford K, supposed to be coming in today. We've got the Doblo, that's Dan Hammett's number two. Chap wants to come and see that tomorrow. We've got another chap coming in tomorrow, just been recommended, and he's gonna have a little wander around and just look through the stock with me. We've got the the uh mocha. A chap went to see the mocker down at Moore's yesterday while I was off picking up the other cars. Saw it with Chris, so massive thanks to Chris at Moore's for walking him around the car. He's decided quite like that. We're just waiting for the rest of the MOT work to be done on it. Quite a long MOT list. Not outrageous stuff. It needs three tyres, apparently. So we're going to end up doing four, because I don't like to do three. Um, so we'll do four tyres on it. Apparently discs and pads all round as well. They reckon they can't find anything wrong with the DPF at all. They've They've checked the DPF levels, everything like that, emissions. They're totally happy with that. The only thing they've found is that between the exhaust system and the DPF, there is a flexi section, and the flexi section is leaking. So that could be what is throwing the DPF sensor out, possibly. They think that might be part of the problem, so they're going to fix that. So the MOT won't be cheap. As I always say on this older stuff, people think we wash them, throw a bucket over them, and send them out the door, but... To get that advisory free MOT, what we're looking at, even with cheap tyres, we're looking at probably 240 on tyres, maybe. Um, discs and pads all round, what we're going to be into that, plus plus the fitting. We're going to be at least a couple hundred into that, aren't we? I'd have thought, I mean, let's say £500 for those things. Fixing the flexi, a couple hours labour and that part as well. We're going to be six, seven hundred pounds. They've got some dust boots to change on it and some suspension boosters as well. I think I'll end up spending a grand on that mocker to get it ready for the ready for the uh, customer and the car itself is what like a a five grand car i think it is so 20 percent is going to go and don't forget i pay 200 pound on that um to the vat man because it is we pay our uh, we pay that on the gross profit of a car so even though i'm spending a thousand pounds on repairs on it i will pay 200 pounds in vat on the car sale for that thousand pounds that never went in my actual pocket because just to clarify that because i probably made that sound a bit muddly if i buy this car for two thousand pounds and i sell it for four thousand pounds i pay vat on the two thousand pounds even if a thousand pounds of that two thousand pound margin went into prepping the car i still pay vat on that money it's the gross profit they'd make us pay vat on so the more you do to a car the worse off you are <laughs> which is probably why some dealers don't do as much to their cars encouraging things things are moving the two stickers we've got now really is the gold mercedes and the kia soul uh electric which i think if i lived in bristol in the new led zone i think that probably would have flown out the door i think it's because down here we just don't have that problem it's not like you need to drive an electric car around here to avoid you uh, fees because there are none around here so i think on a different forecourt that'd fly out the door so i think i need to do my homework do a bit of research find some dealers uh, up that way that sort of do electric cars and low emission cars for the ULEZ zone and I think that would probably do nicely quite a bit of stock for them so if I could move that on just be left with the gold Mercedes I'm sure I'll sooner or later find a home for that I always say to you I've said in the videos before you need one sticker you need at least one sticker because you always do have one and you don't want multiple so if you have one that sits with you for ages and say that's your your worst case scenario then the rest of the cars can move all around it driving an Alfa Romeo you must have one fault left on it you never want to fix all the faults on it because otherwise you end up with problems don't you just leave one minor fault on it oh just a quick one those of you that were concerned about the EOS leaking because a lot you said they hadn't they leaked this has been in the rain all last night and this morning and it is absolutely dry as a bone no misting off the windows or anything like that so some people said it also went into the boot so let's have a quick look at the boot dry as a bone as well even down here in the wheel well well, the pumps are and everything absolutely dry as a bone. It's got this paperwork here, which obviously would have got fogged up in these little sleeves and so forth. How many owners does this have? Only two. So, um, yeah, no concerns on that front at all. 
photo shoot time for the C Max that I've been polishing up. I get out today, Friday. Ideally, I'd be getting. I've got it up on Thursday, but we'll just quickly get round it, try and get it listed up for the day, so we might perhaps catch some people searching tonight for cars. So obviously, we had Davey do the paint. We had the Moors guys do the uh, cam belt on it, which came off clean as a whistle, which is a bit frustrating. And we had an advisory free MOT done. So all set with a fresh cam belt, advisory free MOT, all its paint correction done with the machine polish. It's a really nice looking car. And uh, I actually, like I said before, I think I really quite like the color on this uh, on this shape of car, on this sort of size of car and shape of car. I think it works quite well. Anyway, let's get the photos done, get the video done and get it up for sale. Only 54 odd, I think 54,000 miles on it as well. So it should be quite popular in this price range.